from the bay on full takeoff time. Wrapped up and engines back to cruising speed for a single service. On course for New Zealand at 6.37. Born with the big land planes that fly the red ribbon route from Sydney to London, halfway across the world in four days. First hop, Sydney to Darwin, 2,000 miles across Australia. A circuit over the city, and in minutes, the aircraft tops the great dividing range. The coastal barrier that pinned the early settlers to the sea and held back the first explorers from the rolling plains beyond, the rich sea from wheat country of the fertile inland. Past Simpson Desert that separates the people of the north from the people of the south. Four miles every minute, straight across the sand dunes where man has never stopped. Over the beach of the Camel Dean Sea and the tribal lands of the Aboriginals, a thousand miles from the coast. On over the outskirts, the homesteads and scattered settlements where people are separated by vast distances and natural barriers that defy transport by land. Across Australia and through the aircraft circle giant on the team or two. The big overseas aircraft link Australia with the distant world. Singapore, Karachi, Cairo, Rome, and London. Fiji, Honolulu, San Francisco, and Vancouver. New Zealand. Hong Kong, the Philippines. Japan. Within the country, a network of main air routes and bush feeder lines connects the cities and many of the country tunnels and reaches out to New Guinea, Lord Howe Island, and Norfolk Island. Even a tiny town like Tulawena in northern New South Wales has a daily airliner direct to Sydney. This town of 250 people is a junction for the feeder service by small planes to the whole of the surrounding area. Well, passengers have just arrived from Sydney and are proceeding by the feeder service to Canamble, Walworth, Rewarana, Perth, Rabuga, and St. George. Please board aircraft AAO on the left hand side of the waiting room. The country people accept the plane as a matter of course, in if they find the answer to their isolation. Now, with the aeroplane, men can live and work in the most inaccessible parts of the country. miners of the Whittenham Gorge and out back western Australia are 200 miles from the nearest town and 500 miles from the railway. But by the twice weekly mail train, they can be in their capital city, Perth, almost a thousand miles away in eight hours. <laughs> Northern Territory, where single cattle stations are as big as some European countries, the bush flyers call on regular schedules at the homesteads, missions, and mines. Most homesteads have their own airstrip, and the plane lands right at the door. 
cup of tea for the club. He's always done it before me. Besides the mail, he's brought the groceries from Alice Street and the radio that he took in last trip to do the tour. Two weeks, where before it came to some station only twice a year. One of the great problems of the people of the outback is sudden sickness or accident. Before the train came into medical work, many lives were lost in long overland treks. At Bathurst Island Mission, a boy has concussion and a broken arm. Once he would have had to make an overnight crossing by the weekly logger. Now he'll be in hospital in Darwin within an hour. The aerial ambulance and flying doctor bring expert medical attention within two or three hours of every person in the commonwealth. It may be a fall from a horse. Sometimes a sick baby or an accident in a mine. At Calgara, out in Alice Springs, it's a stockman with a broken leg. A common thing on cattle stations during the month. U.S. from ACR, U.S. from ACR, I have an urgent medical. I have an urgent medical for you. One of the stockmen. The pedal radio message goes straight to the nearest flying doctor base. If the case is urgent, it is only minutes before the doctor is in the air. All right. I will come down straight away. Over. In a country like Australia, the plane has endless uses. It has been used for bushfire spotting, locating schools of fish, finding lost travellers or ships at sea. It has even gone to the sun, helping to fertilise the land and sow the seed and dust the crops. City route has made passenger carrying a major industry. Attention, well, all passengers on the Skybox service to Sydney and Brisbane, please board the aircraft in front of the land. From Adelaide and Melbourne, Brisbane and Sydney, with speed and economy, regularity and safety, they move back and forth across the country carrying one and a half million people a year, more than a sixth of the total population. The two largest companies between them fly 25 million miles a year. Two of the largest internal operating companies in the world, carrying passengers of the world's lowest service. Tremendous achievement goes the task of providing air strips and ground facilities. Mobile construction units of the Department of Civil Aviation are continually at work, laying down new strips and maintaining the old. All air strips are owned or licensed by the department, and its maintenance crews have the responsibility of seeing that navigational aids are in operation at all times. Airport beacons for night radio beacons for blind signs, identification numbers showing the bearing of the runway, electric flare paths, and all the other requirements for safe flying. Weather conditions in Australia are probably the best in the world for aviation, but an efficient meteorological service is still one of the main factors in safe and comfortable flying. 
throughout the mainland and in the surrounding islands, an intricate system of reporting points has been established. From hundreds of airfields and weather stations, constant information flowing to the main city terminal. Nationwide weather reports are made out every three hours. And from these overall reports, individual forecasts are supplied for every flight leaving the area. The pilots plan their flight on the information contained in the weather report, plotting their route and height to obtain the best flying conditions. Before any planes can leave the main terminal, the pilot flight plan showing every detail of the proposed journey will be approved by the Civil Aviation Control Section at the departure point. Uh, wind on the climb is 15014. Uh, track is 345. Two speed of 140. Gives you a uh, course of uh, 348. Down to the one five three. O two three one eight seven. Seven thousand feet clear. Yes, seven thousand feet altitude of twelve oh five, three hundred and thirty gallons suitable. Yes, Tom. Oh. Good. Hi, Bill. Thanks, Tom. See you later. Yes, Tom. Able man love is cruise for Brisbane, seven thousand feet, twelve oh five. The car control operator handles all movement on the ground and all movement in the air in the vicinity of the aircraft. His instructions are given in the international code that is used in aircraft radio work, and the aircraft registration letters are used for all identification. CHAOR is able over item. Roger. As soon as an aircraft takes off, the car notifies the control section of its departure time. The departure time and all relevant details of the flight plan are radioed and televised to the destination and to the reporting points along the route which the aircraft will follow. Flight progress board at the arrival and departure points, operators plot the movement of the aircraft through every stage of its journey. As each plane takes off, an operator enters on clock the details of its flight plan, route, speed, height, time due over reporting points, and so on. He makes out a block for each reporting point. The board operators then have before them a constant picture of all movement in their areas. Flying its guided course along the radio range, the aircraft regularly reports its position over established reporting points. This information is checked against the time shown on the board. If it differs by more than three minutes, the pilot is asked for a double check on his position. Once he takes off, and unless an emergency decision is necessary to ensure the immediate safety of his aircraft, a pilot cannot order any detail of his flight plan without the express permission of the chief control officer at the nearest terminal. Three of three, the able mic is going to uh, 9,000 feet. Able mic. Seven. Easy able mic. Seven nine. Radio, easy able mic. Two to ten to 9,000 feet. Go to 9,000. Thank you, Anna. I'm easy able mic.
strict supervision of aircraft movement applies equally to aircraft on the ground. No plane can taxi or take off without first obtaining permission from the tower office. That's not perhaps where I will write it.
class of girls of the Department of Civil Aviation checks the full over and issues a machine with a certificate of airworthiness that sends it back to flight. The instruments are put through tests more exacting than anything they'll meet in the air. When the aircraft is assembled again, it's as good as brand new. Pilots, too, are continually keeping up to date, mastering the use of new equipment. A pilot never finishes his training, but the development of new instruments and flying techniques changes his job from day to day. And to keep in line with modern development, designers of the Department of Civil Aviation are continually improving existing aerodromes and building new ones. Plans for the new air terminals are as modern as the great new aircraft that will use them. New ground is broken. Rivers are filled in to make runways for the aircraft of the future. Bend from the land and put the roadways in the sky. Shatter with the roar of engines, the menace of distance. Fly over the tops of the mountains and make neighbors out of strangers. Bind together the scattered segments of this huge country. No longer do natural barriers divide the drover of the Kimberleys from the orchard of the Tasmania, or the cane cutter of Queensland from the action of Victoria. The steel worker of Newcastle and the shipwright of Wyala know the gold miner of Calgary. And all the far flung people of the continent are within a few hours of the city of the coast. There are no distant places anymore. Just as the aircraft has brought the people of Australia closer together, so too it has brought them closer to the people of countries overseas. Each year, new international operators are adding new routes to the network that links us with the world, adding their route to the existing routes flown by Australian Air. I named this aircraft the Empress of Sydney, and with all who travel in her, Godspeed. Where the sailing ship once took six months, the aircraft takes four days. Our Australian international aircraft operates between Britain, Australia, and Canada, flying the greater part of the old red route that circles the globe. The British Commonwealth Pacific Airlines DC-6 Discovery for Fiji, Canton Island, Honolulu, San Francisco, and Vancouver is now ready for departure. All aboard, please. <laughs> Aircraft has become the servant of the people, uniting the citizens of this country, uniting the countries of the world. <laughs> 